Hello, this is Andrew Jenks. I'm a palliative medicine consultant. I'm here to give you a brief tutorial about the management of nausea and vomiting. The most important thing to do really is to identify the cause of nausea and vomiting and treat the underlying cause if it's possible and appropriate to do so. Alongside that, targeting the antiemetic to the specific cause. It's okay to use the oral route if there's only mild nausea, but perhaps thinking about the parenteral route if there's severe nausea or indeed vomiting and, or you're worried about gut absorption. Take a good history. You want a history of the presenting complaint, the timing, the volume, the appearance of the vomit. Is there persistent nausea or vomiting as well? Are there associated symptoms and is there a past medical history of relevance? There are many, many causes of nausea and vomiting. A little tip. If the patient is presenting with constant nausea, with little or no vomiting, if they do vom vomit, it's a small amount and they get no relief from their symptoms afterwards, think about a chemical cause for their symptoms, such as an ele electrolyte imbalance or caused by a drug. If they have episodic large volume vomits, perhaps associ associated with abdominal pain or bloating, um, and they feel better after they vomited, Think about a GI cause. Then think about the different parts of the vomiting pathway that we need to know about. So those neurotransmitters are dopamine, acetylcholine, histamine, and 5-HT. There are broadly speaking four drugs that I think are helpful to know about. Let's work those through one by one. The first drug I want you to remember about is metoclopramide. Metoclopramide works predominantly on the GI system. So it's a prokinetic antiemetic. It works predominantly through dopamine receptors in the GI system. So it speeds up gut motility. So the indications for that are patients with gastritis, gastric stasis, a functional or subacute but not complete bowel obstruction, any time you want to speed up gut motility. Metoclopramide can be given orally, three times a day, or subcutaneously or intravenously, or indeed being given um, as, a, uh, as a syringe driver over 24 hours. Although it works predominantly peripherally on the gut, it does also cross the blood-brain barrier. And because it's a dopamine antagonist, it will potentially have Parkinsonian-like side effects. So it will be contraindicated in a patient with Parkinson's disease. The next drug I want to talk to you about is haloperidol. Haloperidol also is a dopamine antagonist, but it works pre predominantly centrally and predominantly on the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So its indications are for patients who've got the chemical causes for nausea and vomiting. So for example, a patient with hypercalcemia uh, who may be nauseated and whilst you're treating the hypercalcemia, you also want to treat uh, their nausea as well, and haloperidol would be a good choice in that scenario. So the chemical causes for nausea and vomiting, think haloperidol. You can use low doses of haloperidol, uh, 1 to 1.5 milligrams of haloperidol twice a day is often enough. You can put, give it orally, you can give it subcutaneously, or you can again put it into a syringe driver. The next drug uh, is cyclozine. Cyclozine again is a centrally acting um, antiemetic that works uh, through histamine. Its indications are for the nausea and vomiting caused by raised intracranial pressure, motion sickness, mechanical or complete bowel obstruction. Again, it can be given orally or parenterally, and parenterally can be given intravenously or subcutaneously or via a subcutaneous syringe driver. The side effects are anticholinergic side effects such as dry mouth and constipation um, and also antihistaminic 
uh, side effects as well, such as drowsiness. The last drug I want to talk to you about is levomepromazine. Uh, levomepromazine is a broad spectrum antiemetic working on pretty much all of the um, neurotransmitters involved in the vomiting pathway. It's broad spectrum, so it's a good second line antiemetic. So target the right antiemetic for the underlying cause that you think first. And if that doesn't work, you could think about using levomepromazine as a second line antiemetic. The dose is 6.25 milligrams once a day, maybe twice a day. You can increase the dose, but again, as with all drugs, start low and titrate up. It comes with quite a few side effects, particularly drowsiness, um, and also can cause postural hypotension. So watch out for that, particularly in the older population, um, and just be a little bit more cautious with your dosing. You may think that I've forgotten to talk about ondansetron. Ondansetron is a really useful drug in the right scenarios, but it is limited in its mode of action. Ondansetron is a 5-HT antagonist, and that is the only way it works. The indications are where you have excessive release of 5-HT. So those particularly might be after chemotherapy, after radiotherapy that has in some way involved the gut, and potentially after gut surgery as well. And sometimes we use it in end-stage renal failure too. Those really are the only indications for using on Dancitron. And although it's good and effective in those scenarios, it tends to just come with side effects in other situations without causing much benefit for the nausea or the vomiting. The side effects particularly are constipation, and that's a big problem with Ondansetron. So just watch out for that drug and don't use it too frequently. There are a number of drugs that are safe to use together and a number of drugs that are not so safe or advisable to use together. So metoclopramide and haloperidol should not be used together. They're both dopamine antagonists. They both cross the blood-brain barrier. And so potentially if you use them together, you're making much more likelihood of developing Parkinsonian side effects. Metoclopramide and cyclozine should also not ideally be used together as well. Metoclopramide you are giving as a prokinetic to speed up gut motility. Cyclozine is anticholinergic, so slows down gut motility. The two are working against each other, so it makes no sense to use them together. Cyclozine and haloperidol are fine to use together. They work in different ways through different receptors, and they're a good complement to each other. Likewise, levomepromazine, although it works on all the neuroreceptors, um, it does tend to have less affinity for all of the neuroreceptors than the other more specific drugs. So you can use it as a second line alongside any of the others. So just to clarify and recap, GI causes, with the exception of complete bowel obstruction, metoclopramide as a prokinetic. Chemical causes, haloperidol. Central causes, motion sickness, complete bowel obstruction use cyclozine and use levomepromazine as your second line if those other things haven't worked. Thanks for listening.